So just like with alcohol, just like with tobacco, there are a lot of different options when trying to implement uh, a policy to reduce illicit substance use and to reduce the consequences of that use. Um, but there are a lot of things that we have learned throughout this, this course um, on drug policy and evaluation of drug policy. So this video is just going to try to bring it all together in terms of what we learned and, what, and how to move forward. So most drug policies have a common theme. The primary theme is that evaluation, evaluation research saying whether uh, the policy is effective or not is really insufficient. There's really not enough to say whether any one policy um, works or even whether it doesn't work. It's still, even after all these years and decades, very much at the theory level. Um, and the research that does exist shows that these policies, which we, which theoretically might work really well, may not be as effective as we thought. Now, part of this is a result uh, or a consequence that it's really hard to research this topic. It's really hard to evaluate something that's illegal in nature. Um, but the lack of new research is both hindering our promotion of additional policies, but it's also hindering our ability to come up with novel ways to evaluate these problems and evaluate these research questions, which have very significant population impacts. When we implement, when we do implement a policy, even on very strong theoretical and even very strong empirical information, if it's implemented poorly, we may actually make things worse. We may actually increase use of a substance. We may increase use of a different substance than the policy actually impacts. Or we may incre um, increase the negative consequences of the substance that this policy doesn't actually target. Um, and what we do find is that effective policies, the policies that are put in place that do seem to work, have a greater impact on the consequences of drug use than the use of those substances itself. So it seems that drug policies have more of a harm reduction approach to them rather than an abstinence approach to them that we see in the tobacco control field or the alcohol control field. With those themes, there are a lot of myths that are worth dispelling, or at least a, hand, a, a few myths that are worth dispelling um, at the end of this course. One is that law enforcement, the people who, put, who, who arrest someone for using illicit substances, and health services community and the public health community are mutually exclusive in this field. They do different things and they don't really need to coordinate their activities. That is not true of anything. We need kind of complete overlap of coordination of activities so that they are complementary to each other and not battling each other in any one community. Um, it's another myth that trying to, target, trying to target drug use and trying to target um, consequences of drug use are distinct in actuality. They could be the same policy, and in the worst case scenario, they should be complementary. We really shouldn't expect to see significant public health improvements if we only target use or we only target consequences. We really need to do both at the same time. And finally, the last myth worth dispelling is that drug policies only affect the drug users. That's simply not the case. These policies will impact the drug users, but it'll also impact the people around the users. It'll impact the um, resources necessary to implement these policies. So if they're effective and they work, less resources can be devoted to this um, topic and can be diverted elsewhere. So drug policies can have a very large impact and certainly goes much beyond the individual user. So some lessons that we have learned from the drug control um, field within addiction science. One is that there really is no single policy, there's no single program that can be used to solve the problem. We need a comprehensive, coordinated approach um, to reduce illicit substance use. It's not going to be one, um, one, one substance, it's not going to be one program targeting one substance, it's really going to be kind of all together. That's the only way it's going to work, and that's really was the, that's the lesson that we take out of not only drug control, but also alcohol control, as well as tobacco control. Um, we have learned that we may need to have a, an emphasis on drug policies to make sure more general policies succeed. So we may need a drug policy and drug policies and drug programs in place to make sure that social welfare systems uh, succeed or anti-poverty programs succeed because they are so related to one another. We know that reduced drug use is often an inadvertent consequence of these other policies. So if we, we can reduce poverty in a neighborhood, then we often see reduced drug use. So again, they're complementary to each other. They're not mutually exclusive. 
And to reduce these negative consequences of the drug use that, that occurs, um, we need significant investments in the healthcare infrastructure and in the social services in infrastructure. Again, they may not directly target drug use and consequences of use, but through these um, larger environmental issues trying to promote healthy decision making and healthy choices among this population we're concerned about. Now, the, the first thing we typically think of, or the average person might think of when we talk about illicit substances, is law enforcement. Arrest the users, arrest the distributors, arrest the producers. But it, law enforcement itself has rapidly diminishing returns. Really, the most effective thing we can do in terms of law enforcement, we've already done. We've already prohibited the substance. We've already made it illegal. Once we do that, um, it's kind of this logarithmic um, of curve. The more enforcement we have, the less returns we get. Um, we really need more information whether legalizing illicit substances actually has an impact. We're getting more information about state level um, marijuana legalization in the United States, but with federal government still make, still having marijuana illegal, it's hard to determine what changes would actually be in place. If federal law changed, if federal regulations changed, how would that impact use versus state law? And finally, um, these, these policy, these prevention programs at the community level, the family level, the, the school level, they could be effective, but it depends, um, the import, their importance depends on their population impact. If they're cost prohibitive and we can't reach a large number of people, they may not be very important. It may not really be good to improve overall population health um, since that's kind of what we're focused on here in this course. Some things that simply don't work are things like crop eradication. We can eradicate all the poppies in an area to reduce the heroin supply, but that's not actually going to influence the total drug supply that's out there. It will still exist. And then prescription, prescription drugs themselves, even though they're legal, are actually a large source of illegal drug use. So remember, about 50% of all people who use opioids for illegal purposes get prescription drugs, get their drugs for free from families and friends. They're simply unused prescriptions from other people. So there's other things we need to think about in terms of drug policy rather than just kind of these illicit producers. And finally, we really just need more research in the drug policy arena. We don't really have any research in low and middle income countries. We don't really have any research on supply and law enforcement policies like things like um, changing the marketplace in, in market restrictiveness, things like that, and what it looks like. Um, so we simply need more, and we need more resources to do the research. Because again, because it's an illicit market, because it's a market um, that's hidden and it's closed, we need more resources to do the same amount of work um, than, we, than we would need if we were looking at alcohol or tobacco. 